Hey there, this is Shivani. I'm an application engineer with Go Engineer. I've also got a bachelor's in aerospace engineering. What I want to do today is show you how to translate results from flow simulation into result types that are more useful or more desired for aeronautical engineering. What I want to go through today is starting with uh, calculating lift and drag, which results to be outputting for that, and then converting that over to CL and CD. I'm going to show you how to very quickly automate pulling the res results for all different angles of attack. We're going to find center of pressure, sort of. You'll see that center of pressure can't be directly calculated from flow, and so there's going to be a little bit of math behind this calculation that I'll show you. Uh, pitching moment, similar story, I'll get to that later on in the presentation. Uh, here on the right hand side, this is the model we're going to be using. Yes, it is overly simplified. My idea here is to keep it with a model that can be easily predicted. That's very generic and uh, something that can solve very quickly. Starting with drag here, I've got my coefficient of drag versus angle of attack. Generally we're having flow over predict drag, but this is still assuming we're using smooth surfaces, uh, not a lot of turbulence calculation, because of course technically we can't always get all the portions of drag calculated in any software. Uh, same thing with lift. Uh, we have coefficient of lift versus angle of attack here. This is for a cambered airfoil. Usually uh, flow is going to be under predicting lift in a post stall angle of attack. Um, again assuming lower turbulence smooth surfaces. Uh, two ideas on how we could be calculating lift and drag here. Either we keep our part at a zero degree angle and vary the angle of the velocity hitting it to produce that angle of attack. This is going to be beneficial because it will be keeping our mesh the same and thus removing small deviations. You're also not having to remesh the part every time, saving you a little bit of time there. Um, but your math gets more complicated. So the other way is to rotate your part, leave your velocity going in the same direction the entire time. This makes outputting your results a little bit easier. That's what I'm going to be using for speed. All right, so let's switch over to the part file and take a look at just kind of how I set this up. Um, starting with just this angle here, if I double click on it, you're going to see I've got this set up to 10 degrees. And in my sketch, you'll see I just drew a horizontal line and drew this to base my part off of. So I would just come in here and vary this angle. Coming into flow simulation itself, let's look at the, let's look at the basic setup that I've done. Uh, starting from the top, general settings, external analysis, so I've got a computational domain, at least a couple chords in front of my part, 5 to 10 after it. You want a lot of extra space around it to capture the entire pressure differential. Uh, moving over here to fluids, just got some air. Default wall conditions, not changing anything here. And here in the initial conditions, I've got um, regular ambient stuff going on here. And here's my velocity in the extraction, negative 30 feet per second, moving from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. Uh, next thing to look at, units. I'm using standard English units. Initial mesh. Uh, this, I've bumped it up to five just to keep things in a fairly good uh, first run. It's still in a testing stage, though. If I was going to be taking this simulation seriously, I would be putting a lot finer mesh around my part file. When you get to six, seven, or eight, you're doing automatic refining. But what I would recommend for any part that you're trying to get good results for Instead of trying to do it through the general mesh, I would come into a local initial mesh right here. Uh, click a face or an entire component through your tree like this. Turn off automatic settings and go through these tabs and bump up the refinement levels. If you're just starting out, I really recommend going to this third tab, refining cells, uh, checking a couple of these boxes and forcing the refinement using these sliders. All right, I'm going to cancel that because uh, I don't want to deal with that calculation time right now. 
Uh, so after putting that in, uh, our last little piece before getting into our CL and CD calculation, our left and drag calculation, is putting in these goals. Now because of the direction that the flow is coming in, my lift and drag is going to be automatically in the global y and x direction. So if I come into here, you'll see that my drag force is just my global force in the x direction. And that's how easy that is. Uh, now I need to come in here and try converting over to CL or CD. And that's what I have this slide over here for. Um, here on the, left on the right hand side, uh, you'll see my force of lift and force of drag equations. Fairly straightforward. Um, starting with the force of lift, we just saw that this was going to be forced in the y direction, it's going to be forced in the x direction. But if you are varying your free stream velocity instead of the angle of your part, you're going to have to do this calculation first using uh, the angle of attack. Now the thing is, if you were setting this up inside of flow, you're probably doing this with an equation goal using fx and fy. And the thing is, you can't solve for CL using an equation goal like this. So you're going to be putting yourself through a little bit more hand calculation, probably outputting this in Excel instead of SolidWorks. Uh, this, this is density of air, velocity, we know free stream velocity, see how we're solving for. And the question is, how do we find A? Well, for my part, A is the frontal surface area, because that's what we use for general parts. Uh, you see for other types of parts, you would use different kinds of calculations for A. Um, here I've got some instructions for how to solve for A. I'm going to go ahead and just show you what to do here, what I've done. Let's X out of here. Go back to my part file. Uh, in a derived configuration, and I use the derived configuration to prevent making any accidental changes to my flow project, I created a second boss. Now I used a plane perpendicular to the part file that I'm already using, perpendicular to the flow front, then creating a sketch, all you do is select your faces and use convert entities. Now you'll see mine is thinner than the actual part file. This is because my flow project is using a 2D simu uh, simulation instead of a 3D simulation. So I'll just have to use that thinness of the 2D computational domain. Then you just do a simple boss extrude, doesn't matter how thick you make it. Click that face and use evaluate measure to find the area. So that's how I'm finding frontal surface area. This value will change depending on which angle of attack you are, so you're going to have to go back and update your goal for each angle of attack. Back to our flow project. Once you set up CL and CD that way, you can go ahead and run. You'll get results like so, CL and CD. So our next uh, thing we're going to find out, how do I take just that one angle of attack and propagate that out to all different angles of attack? Parametric study is going to be the best way to do this. The parametric study, you'll see I already have one set up right here. You can start one yourself by going to Tools, Flow Simulation, Solve, New Parametric Study. Now once you're in here, uh, you have two different types that you can choose from. For all the different angles of attack, we're going to be using a what-if analysis. If I was trying to focus it on one particular lift result, I could use a goal optimization, but what if it's going to be best for all angles of attack? Now I've got two choices here. This here on the left hand side, add simulation parameter. This is the one I would choose if I was wanting to vary the VX and VY in the free stream. I would come to general settings, initial ambient conditions, and check these velocities here. Since I'm not doing that, I'm changing the angle of my part. I would choose the second one, dimension parameter, double click my part, choose my 10 degrees and hit OK. Once I've picked that, you can see it's choosing that as a discrete value. If I edit my variation, I can do something like range 
and say, hey, go from 0 to 10, vary that angle by 1 or 2, and run that many calculations. Then I can go to Output Parameters, choose the goals that I want to output. I would just be choosing Drag and Lift because CL and CD are going to change for frontal area every time in this calculation. Go over to Scenario and then hit Run. Let that run itself. Uh, now I've already got one pre-solved here. You can see I chose proper values here. Went out to Output, these Scenario, Goals, and you get your results. Now once you're at this point, you see as I highlight this, this is just a st standard table. Um, I can output this into Excel using this button right here, or I can just choose to copy and paste the values that I want. Uh, taking this over to Excel, um, I just copy those values in here, went and found all the different frontal surface areas using that boss extrude I made. Here's density of air, here's the velocity I'm using. I took out the negative signs to make things easier and did that quick calculation for C on CD, and here are those plots. Uh, next thing we kind of want to talk about here, center of pressure. Uh, you're seeing right away that I'm saying this is not possible to, f to find the exact point of center of pressure. MX, MY, and MZ, these are going to be the moments about the center of pressure, so all of those are going to be zero. MX, zero over here, this is all the moments about my origin. So we know m is zero. Um, as I transform these equations, we find out that one of these equations is undeterminate, so I can only get this far into the calculation, y in terms of z and x in terms of z. I put in a, a value for z, two of them, to find two different points for x and y. Uh, let's go back into the simulation, show you kind of what that looks like. Outputting all three forces, all three torques about the origin. I've got two sets of goals here. Uh, this is the first parameter that I'm multiplying by z. This one is the parameter um, if z is equal to zero, what x would be. After outputting all of those values, I come in here, I take a look at those numbers, and I get the two coordinates. I come into my model file, I have this sketch here. Now all I did was draw a line, very simple, click one of the endpoints, type in the coordinates that I calculated. Okay, just do that twice. And that's how I got this line right here. Then I extended it so that it would intersect my plate. know that the center of pressure is somewhere along this line intersecting this part file. This is fairly easy for a flat plate. I can guess much easier where the center of pressure is. On a more complex part, maybe not as easy to guess, but this is the closest we can get. So that's the center of pressure calculation. Getting into pitching moment here. Uh, here on the left hand side I've got a picture. Pitching moment is the moment about the aerodynamic center. The aerodynamic center is where moment is constant no matter what angle of attack you are at. It does not change with angle of attack. The reason we want to find these kinds of moments is as a part file or wing moves through an angle of attack, um, the pitching moment is going to try and force that part file back to zero degrees. So it's a stability factor. Uh, so if I'm trying to use the moment equations we found earlier using the parameter on the coefficient of moment does not change with angle of attack. So I do a little bit of a derivation here. I can find this value and this value fairly easily, all of these values, but we need to take a look at my lift versus angle of attack and my drag versus angle of attack plots. Now I did this using the parametric study results that I found before, moving here to the pitching moment ones. You can see I plotted drag versus angle attack and lift versus angle attack here. Even for this simple part, I'm not getting linear results. 
which would make the derivative of these two equations varying with angle of attack, which makes this equation very difficult to solve for x and y and get two standard points where I can find aerodynamic center. I'm changing with angle of attack. So it's unfeasible to really use this. I think our second best option is to find moment about the CG, the center of gravity, because that can still tell us if we have a stabilizing moment here. So the way I did this, very simple. What you want to do is first set up a center of mass. You want to go to Mass Properties. Um, starting in 2014, we have a button for Create a Center of Mass feature, but you always get the center of mass XYZ. You just want to take those XYZ points. You want to come over to your model, start a new 3D sketch, create a point in space, put those XYZ values in there. I already have one sitting right there in the center of my center of mass feature. Then you want to come over to your coordinate system, that's features, reference geometry, coordinate system. And place that at the point here. Now my x and y are already in the correct directions, they're based on my origin right here, so I'm good with that. Then all you need to do from within your flow study, as you're setting up your moment, like this, you're going to come in here and pick coordinate system 1. Now as you find your moment later on, it's going to be about that point. You're finding your moment about the CG. Thank you guys for watching our webinar. If you would ever like to get more information, feel free to email me. If there's different aeronautical results you're looking for, you know, go ahead and send that this way. Other than that, we have lots of great videos on our knowledge base, kb.goengineer.com. Or you can check out the SolidWorks forums at my.solidworks.com. 